As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Check out this orange grove, everybody. Today we're coming to you from the Sunshine State of Florida. And we will be visiting two different deer farms. Right now I'm at one of the largest deer farms in the entire state. But we're gonna start out at a relatively new deer farmer's place. And I'll tell you what, they have things started out extremely well. I'm Kim Easley. My husband Chad and I own KC Whitetails right here in Mims, Florida on the east coast of Florida. Our farm is a small 10 acre farm outside in the outskirts of Mims, Florida. We started this farm because we have a love of the whitetail deer. We have been in numerous leases over the years and what we really decided is that we love the interaction with the deer. We also wanted to continue an agricultural business here in Florida and with the citrus industry rapidly decline and we needed something to do on our small 10 acre farm. We've been deer farming now for right at a year and a half. We started farming deer just as an accident on our way home from a hunting trip one time got the bright idea to raise our own deer. We started looking into it and this is where it ended. You know, we go to lots of different deer farms. I mean, big ones and little ones. And this one right here is not the littlest deer farm by far. Uh, it's on 10 acres. Uh, but one thing about this deer farm, it's uh, probably one of the prettiest deer farms I've been to. We started with a small amount of deer. We now have quite a few and it is, continues to grow. And we're very excited about the future and what it's going to offer with the deer that we have. All right, so these are the boys, huh? Yes, sir. These boys were born here last year. It's our first bucks. We're really excited about them. Uh, we planned uh, these bucks by their pedigree. So they're exactly what we wanted to build this year. We think that they're very beautiful now and can't wait to see what they turn into. Well, they are pretty. And, and as far as pedigrees go, folks, what, what's happened, Chad is probably as a serious a person as I know as far as looking at pedigrees and, and trying to determine what he wants to build. And so what he wound up doing, he went back and he studied the deer industry and what deer threw. And, and in the deer industry, it's all about predictability. And so you look at these deer right here and, and what Chad has done, he has selected the, the, the sire and the dam of each one of these. And the thing that I like about it, I know you've got to be proud of yourself for these deer, you selected what they're bred out of, but they were born here in your farm. Yes, sir. And so by, by breeding them here in the farm, it's, a, it's almost a, a sense of accomplishment that, okay, now all of a sudden it's a matter of time. It's very gratifying when you see a plan come together. And so, you know, you, you, the thing about deer farming, I do want to point this out, uh, it, it isn't something that is instant, but just be able to see the results. I mean, instantly you can see the deer on the ground like this, but it will take you quite some time. I mean, I don't ever judge a deer by, with his antlers ever at a yearling. No, they will change quite a bit. As you can see, uh, the bigger one out there and the smaller one out there are actually womb brothers. Really? Yes, sir. 
So what we have found before is that you really can't judge them exactly off of a yearling. They're beautiful yearlings, but there's a lot of variables. By two, you'll start, start to get a good read on them. So we should re really see the smaller one do something fantastic next year. Oh yeah, and see a lot of times, if somebody may say with the same genetics, why in the world would one be smaller than the other? It's just like, I mean, they can get sick. I mean, a deer gets sick, he may get pneumonia, he may get uh, worms. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's different things that can happen to a deer. And uh, although they're, they're there's wound brothers, one of them's gonna get a little bit bigger than the other one. Well, at the end of the day, Keith, we can plot it all out on paper, but we still have to remember it's farming. Yeah, I mean, it really is farming. And, uh, but these are pretty deer. You can tell they're nice and calm. And that's the good thing about it. I mean, your pins are absolutely beautiful too. Now, okay, you've got, uh, these were born on the farm, so I know you've gotta have some sisters out of these guys. Absolutely, right over here in the next pen. You got any babies out of them? Sure do. All right, let's go look at them. I'm Garrett Easley, and Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Newport Labs, the North American Deer Registry, Beam Fence Company, Shock Effect, GMS, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, Record Rack Deer Feeds, T3 Whitetails, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. The North America Deer Farmers Association is a unified voice for all deer farmers and deer hunters. So if you love deer, I strongly encourage you to become a member and look into the North America Deer Farmers Association. Look at the girls, Chad, they're beautiful. I mean, they are calm and they are just as pretty as they can be. Thank you. That's one of my yearlings that was born here this year. Wow. And I mean, look at the fawns. And so how many fawns do you have in here? Three. Okay. All right. And every one of them, you built those pedigrees, you built those deer just like you built the bucks, right? That's correct. Okay, so what is it that you're really trying to do genetic-wise? Why do you pick the, the strain that you have uh, that you've got in these pens? I want to look for a deer that's going to have known production. Um, I also want to look at the marketability aspect, and I want to build these deer and their pedigrees around both of those. That way... Uh, you've got the best of both worlds at that point. I mean, you know, and what are you talking about, folks? There's a lot of deer out there that are really big deer, but they're not marketable deer. And, and I mean, you've seen it too. I mean, there's some guys that have got some giants in the market, but they don't have the pedigree to back it up. And so these deer, they do have the pedigree to back them up. Absolutely. Now, did you do AI on these? Not this year. Okay. All right, so as far as uh, your future plans go, are you gonna plan on doing artificial insemination or what? We are going to AI six does this year mm -hmm. and we have a breeder buck we're bringing up that is uh, very well pedigreed and it lines up with everything that we're doing. So we're gonna cover a couple of them and we're gonna AI the other six. Okay, I wanna ask you some. what is your secret? And I'm serious, what is your secret to keeping them so gentle? How in the world, what do you do? Well, this pen has a lot of cover in it, makes them feel very secure. Uh, there's a lot of grasses and natural forage for them that they really enjoy. They feel like they can disappear anytime that they want to. So when they come to see you, it's because they want to. Mm -hmm. We do spend a lot of time in these pens. We're in here multiple times during the day. We spend a lot of our free time in these pens because we enjoy it that much and that's where we get our stress relief and we really enjoy being in here. Well, you can tell you spend a lot of time in here. Uh, I gotta ask you a question. On the outside of the pens, I've seen uh, uh, two donkeys walk around. What's the deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just liked them, but uh, ultimately they are, in this area, the best uh, predator control that we have. A donkey will run off coyotes, dogs, anything that wants to run or circle our pens, the donkeys will head them off. And the deer aren't scared of them? Not a bit. You do have deer for sale, don't you? Absolutely. We uh, do want to keep our population kind of small, so we do constantly have deer for sale. If you'd like more information, you can give me a call at 321-698-9470. All right, well, they look beautiful. 
and I can't wait to get back here next year and see what those bucks are doing because I know they're fixing to blow up. I can't wait to see it. Joyce from Tennessee wants to know, she says, I've always wondered do deer in deer farm live longer than deer outside of deer farm? Thanks for the good shows, Keith. Keep it up. Uh, Joyce, the answer is absolutely positively deer in a deer farm live longer than deer outside a deer farm. And there's many reasons for that, but it's primarily because of animal husbandry. Deer farmers love their deer, and we want to make sure we do everything we can to keep them healthy and live long lives. It's important to point out that any deer that dies on a deer farm, we want to find out exactly what it died from. Where deer on the outside, when deer die, nobody knows what they died from, really. And so deer in deer farms, we're, deer farmers are highly regulated, the deer are extremely healthy, and what we wind up doing as deer farmers, we do everything we can to make sure that that deer's life is as good as it can be. So the answer is yes, deer inside a deer farm live a lot longer than deer outside a deer farm. Joyce, thanks for the question. Florida is one of those states that they close the borders. And what I mean by that is they stop the importation of white-tailed deer. Uh, even though they were tested in healthy deer, they stopped allowing that. And what happened, Mike has been deer farming many, many years. And so knowing that the border was gonna be closed, they brought healthy tested deer in. And the reason why is to bring that genetic diversity into his herd. Now, while other guys are bringing their deer in, I mean, other farmers knew the borders were closing too. They were bringing deer in from other states, uh, up north, uh, Iowa and Indiana, uh, north, bringing these healthy tested deer in. What Mike's strategy was is to bring deer in from Texas. Now, the reason why he brought his deer in from Texas, well, I'll let Mike tell you why. My name's Mike Mansfield with High Expectation White Tails here in LaBelle, Florida. We're located about 20 minutes uh, east of Fort Myers, Florida in LaBelle. Um, started the farm out here, it's a rural area. I have about 15 acres out here to get started. Beautiful place for deer. Picked it out just for the deer farm. We currently have about, we have six pens right now with a buck grow out pen. We're running about 130 deer, including fawns. We have about 60 fawns on the ground right now. As part of our marketing and business plan, we decided to use Texas Genetics here in Florida. Um, they are a hardy animal, they're more tolerant to the heat, the challenges, the insect challenges, um, just a tougher animal. And they grow big racks, they're good deer. As part of our business plan, that's what we were looking at. And uh, it's been very successful, it's worked very well for us down here. My son Austin, 17 years old, he lives and breathes this farm. He loves the deer. He gets up at 6 a.m. before football, bottle feeds his fawns, feeds his adult deer, looks at them, gives me a report on them. It's his passion. He, lo he doesn't talk about anything else he wants to do. You know, we talk about doe lines and about building a deer herd from the doe side up. Tell us about these girls. Um, went out to Texas picked out some of the best Texas genetics we could find on the doe side. Um, you know, you care about what's on the top side, on the, on the sire side, but more I care about what the doe is, the doe mitochondria, where she goes back to. All of our does came out of, or most of our does came out of the original Cutzer line, which Hal and Lance Burdall and those guys have bred and made better, and we, got, we were able to get into those herds and pick out what we wanted. So you went back to old proven foundation lines and came and brought that and those were your anchor lines here that That's you correct. that you built the bucks from. That's correct. And so so everything here really goes back if you start studying the pedigrees is going to go back to that Texas influence. That's a pretty cool strategy right there. And, and basically back to five main doe lines. We use the Vicky line, the Fraulein line, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, doe two, which is, goes back to Express. Okay, and as far as helping people, if somebody wants to come by for a, a, a farm tour, okay, uh, tell them what they need to do. Just give me a call. Um, come, you're welcome anytime. We do tours. We'll take, bring the family, bring the kids. Just come, just give me a call and come by. Yep, he's just outside of LaBelle, and give him a telephone number. My telephone number is area code 239-851-6864. That's my cell. Uh, call anytime, anytime. If, uh, let me ask you this, uh, 
do you offer consulting for people too? If somebody is interested in getting deer farming, they need to come out here and probably take a look and ask the right questions. But if they say, okay, I want to take the next step, can you help them? Absolutely, absolutely. And when we sell deer, it's not just, I sell you the deer, I get you started and I walk away. We'll come up, help you do the pin layout all the way through maintenance on your deer three, four years down the line. If you don't buy deer from me, I'm still here to help you out on the deer. Make the right decisions when you start in the deer business. Make them for the right reasons. Do your due diligence. It's a business. Treat it like one. Now it's time for the Beam Fence Minute. On your property, if you've got some old barbed wire, some old woven wire, wire that's been there for 20 years, that's rusted up in the ground, We've got a wire roller that'll get rid of that wire for you, roll it back up, it'll do it efficiently and quickly and labor saving. We've designed a machine, it's called the Roll Master. What this machine does is it will recover all this old wire, barbed wire, smooth wire, and also a little roll up page wire as well. It's a hydraulic machine that operates off your pallet forks or your front end of your tractor. It's safe, it's easy to use, and it's really efficient. It'll get the job done real quick for you. This product is called the Rollmaster. If you're interested in this product or other products that we have, go to our website at beamfence.com. Although lots of deer farmers wind up having bucks in lots of different pens. Okay, they'll have one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds. You're different. You have one great big pen that's got lots of cover in it, and you have all of your bucks in one pen. They're all different age classes. Why do you put them all in one pen? I think it keeps the bucks more comfortable. Really? I think it makes uh, the yearlings more comfortable, seems to push a little growth maybe, but just keeps them comfortable. They're not looking at another buck across the field in a different pen. So the social structure I think is real important too. I mean, they, under, they, they figure out kind of the pecking order. It's like, your deer are beautiful. I mean, I can, I can look at them tell, because I've seen deer all over the country and I go to the north a lot. I can tell that these are southern genetics. I can tell because of their faces and their ears and their tails and the way that they're built. They're beautiful bucks and and although they're not, I mean I look at them, I mean they're not just great big gnarly non-typical deer. These are basically more typical frame. And explain to everybody what your strategy is, why you really like that typical frame. Um, we really want a deer to look like a white-tailed deer should, like uh, like what everybody thinks of when they see or want to see a big deer. Mm -hmm. um, typical frame, tall tines. Now we are breeding for extra width. We're trying to add that 26, 27, 28 inch width, but we want to keep them a typical frame. We want nice tall tines, a pretty deer. But these deer, and, and as you wind up as a deer breeder, we change it, we start introducing new genetics you're gonna see the result of those genetics and some different characteristics crossing with your genetics that you may not really like or you may like a whole lot. And that's the reason why it's really a lot of trial and error. A lot of trial and error. And it takes time, it takes time. You gotta, you know, you gotta see what you're doing and see what genetics are gonna cross the best. Okay, so tell me about, you've got some exceptional deer in here. Tell me, point some out and tell me about them. Uh, you got Express Boy over there. Mm -hmm. Nice, pretty three-year-old. Um, Born and raised here in Florida. Everything in this pen is born and raised here in Florida with Texas Foundation. Everything in here has Texas Foundation okay. on the bottom. Everything I talk about is pretty much on the bottom, on the doe side, the dam side. This is subtropical conditions. It is hot, there is green, lush, wet, humid, and there are lots of bugs and, and the bugs are a challenge down here. Definitely, definitely. We don't get, I mean, we get one, two frosts a year. We don't have a big bug kill off down here. We have them year round. Okay, now we talk about uh, the Texas influence in his herd. You acted quickly before the borders closed to bring those genetics in, didn't you? That's correct. Yes, and, sir. and knowing that other people were acting and bringing genetics in from the north, you chose to bring in Texas genetics. That's correct, that's correct. We bought some of the best Texas deer we could find, the best Texas does we could find. These are absolutely beautiful deer, and keep in mind, folks, these bucks you're looking at, 
Every one of them was born right here at High Expectations Whitetails. That's very impressive. Chad and Kim Easley were looking to get started into the deer business. Um, they came to me and uh, we got started. Chad came very educated on the deer business. The ins and outs, everything he could research, um, he did. He was the most educated person that ever came and talked to me about starting a deer business. Um, we got him in, we got him started. I wanna say ground level, but not really ground level. I don't think that's a place to start. He started with some good deer. We had fawns out of them. We sold his entire herd that year and he kept the fawns. He became profitable at year one, a profitable deer business in one year. Not many other businesses can say that. If you'd like to be like Chad and Kim and get a profitable business started within one year, please give me a call. High expectation whitetails. I never get tired of being around whitetail deer. They are incredible. If y'all would like more information on deer farming, what better way is there than to, well, to pick people's brains that are in deer farming? Like you can come to High Expectations Whitetails and talk to Mike, and you can go over to Casey Whitetails and talk to Chad and Kim. If you want to get a hold of them, all you need to do is get a hold of my website, and we'll have all their contact information there. I'm Keith Warren, and if you have a question or comment about today's program, shoot me an email, and I promise you, I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching deer and wildlife stories.